If you don't like lip liner, get this lip liner. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Krisha. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be a very interesting video. I feel like these best and worst videos can be a little bit controversial. Let's keep in mind, it is only makeup and it is only personal opinion. And if I can help you guys out just to kind of decipher between the best and the worst of Charlotte Tilbury, then I've done my job today. Today's video is going to be just that, my top five and bottom five products from Charlotte Tilbury, a brand that I absolutely adore and a brand that I've thoroughly tried out. As I seem to purchase anything new that comes out, pretty much tried the majority of her line at this point. I feel like I have a good take on the best and worst from this brand. If you are interested in seeing what my thoughts are, stay tuned. All right guys, so what should we do first? Probably the worst, start off with the worst, end off on a good note, let's do that. First product, which you guys may be a little bit shocked, and I'm just gonna start it off as a shocker, is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Wah wah, I know, what a bummer, right? I have tried this product in a number of shades. I cannot get this to feel good on my skin and to look the way I think it should look. This product came out and it was a bit confusing. Some people thought it was like maybe a highlighter or a primer or a hybrid of. I mean, it has a touch of coverage. If you want to use it as a light base, you could. It is kind of highlighting and glowy, so you could use it under makeup to kind of give a sort of like lit from within glow or over top. And I do feel that swatched, it does kind of give a little bit of a glow. I have this in shade two, so it's pretty light. So there's just like that little bit of glow. You know what I mean, of reflectiveness? My issue with this is that it feels heavy. I feel like the product has a little bit too much emollients and a slightly too much weight to it. I just feel like it's heavy and whenever I wear this on top or underneath, I just feel like my skin is pseudo suffocating. It's not that I don't like luminous glowy products in liquid form because I do. The Balm Essentiel is quite an emollient balm from Chanel. Love it so much. Even the, um, the drops from Chanel, sort of like the glow drops in the pump, love those. They kind of feel a little bit kind of like gel-like and quite light on the skin. I don't like heavy makeup to begin with. I don't like heavy foundation. I don't like heavy cream blushes. And I don't like heavy primers slash highlighters. So yes, while this product does work for a lot of people, if you're kind of in that same state of mind where you don't like a lot of heaviness in your makeup and you don't want it to feel heavy on the skin, you may want to forego this almost pseudo cult classic product, yes because it can feel, like I said, quite heavy on the skin. And for the payoff in terms of glow, it just, it's just not worth it. I'm gonna do something a little bit less controversial because I feel like you guys are going to feel like, well, what is wrong with her? How does she not like some of these? But it is what it is. And like I said, not everything is for everyone. But this one here is a pretty much, you know, straight up fail. It is her duo liner. She comes out with these once in a while with different collections. Um, this one happened to be with that maroon, kind of like coppery and blue, it had kind of like a blue um, palette. So double liner, this dried out so fast, you guys. I got it and it was creamy for like the first two weeks to month. And now even if I sharpen it, like it's pretty much kind of like shrunk from the edges of the pencil, if that makes sense. I wouldn't be surprised if it just flew out at some point. So I'm trying to like, it is so dry, so crumbly. If you kind of try to go from an angle, it doesn't go on. If you go out here, it kind of goes on, but then it's crumbly. There's no way that I'm going to be able to gently and smoothly line my eyes at this point. It was such a disastrous fail. I sharpened it just before filming because I wanted to just test it again, but I've tested this so many times. I've sharpened it so many times and barely used it because I keep trying to get at some softer product and it just got too hard too fast. So let me know down below if you guys experience this with those duo liners. I'm really hesitant to get any more down the road, but I feel like sometimes formulas improve, right? So not to say I won't ever purchase this, but I would be a little bit more hesitant next time. All right, moving along. Oh, 
I've wanted to love this blush. I'm sure a lot of you do. And this is the cult classic. I mean, all of these are pretty much cult classics at this point. So I'm not going to use that word too often, but cheek to cheek in pillow talk. This product, I mean, is just so popular. A product that she's constantly putting in her like gift with purchases. She's putting it in her mystery boxes. It's a product that I think would be universally flattering. It comes in a darker shade as well now. And I think my issue with this is not really the formula. I mean, it's smooth enough. Um, it has a glow to it. So it's not really the formula. And I have used quite a bit of it because I keep trying to love it. The issue for me with this is the shade itself. I feel like Pillow Talk and most of her Pillow Talk products is sort of a very wearable, neutral, slightly cool pink. And this, you guys, it just goes on very, very like coppery, kind of like bronzy. And it's not a bad look, but it's just not as flattering. It's just kind of this like ready undertoned blush. And it's not what I want out of a pillow talk color. So I'm just going to swatch it for you guys. Uh, where can I go? It doesn't look bad. It just has that slightly brownie, bronzy undertone to it. It's not what I want for my for my blush usually and it's just kind of like a you know misrepresentation in a way pillow talk should be like i said sort of a neutral mauvey universal pink you know and this definitely goes on very peachy very goldeny the shimmer or sheen in here can sort of enhance fine lines because it has like that slightly i don't know like it's not a sparkle but it's a sheen that kind of just settles in and I don't know if there's a lot of minerals in this particular product. Kind of just enhances a little bit of dryness as well, just the way it's formulated and it just kind of disappointed me. So I don't recommend it, especially if in your mind Pillow Talk should be one thing. I feel like this is not what Pillow Talk in a way should be. <laughs> All right, speaking of Pillow Talk, let's just get this one over with. Oh my gosh, I bet you she sells one Matte Revolution Pillow Talk lipstick every few seconds. I mean, this is definitely a very, very popular, crazily hyped lip color, especially when it first came out. Like it, this is what essentially started this Pillow Talk craze in her makeup line. I've gone through quite a bit of it again. I've really tried to love it. I put it aside, I try it again, I put it aside. And there's a couple things that I don't appreciate about this lipstick. First off, I feel like her Matte Revolution formula when it first came out, which is including this one, was very waxy. So this is a formula that tends to just sort of sit on top of the lips. It doesn't mesh or meld in with the lips. It just kind of sits there and it's slippy and it's waxy and it's not ideal for what I look for in a lipstick. I do feel like her current Matte Revolution formula, so any newer shades that are coming out, are just formulated a little bit more creamy and I dare say slightly tacky. So they just sort of like melt into the lips a little bit more, stay on a little bit better, just kind of adhere better. Plus the shade, while in the tube, it looks absolutely what Pillow Talk in my head should be. Slightly pinky, slightly mauvey. And then once I put it on my lips, it just goes kind of muddy. It goes kind of muddy. It really doesn't do anything for me. I just feel like it could be a little bit lighter maybe. It could be a little bit more pink versus that really like almost dusty mauve. It's not flattering with my skin tone. Every time I wear it, I just, I'm not happy with it. I don't like the formula. While it may work for someone maybe a little bit more tanned, I think it would look quite nice on a more tanned skin tone. I never reach for it anymore and I constantly try to love it. And I think it's time for me to finally, just after this video, set it aside along with these other ones that I don't enjoy and just move on with my life. <laughs> oh, I wanted to love this because you know what? The formula isn't tragic. It really isn't a bad formula. And this is the Magic Concealer. And I have used it. I've featured it in a lot of my videos down below when I list the makeup I use. It looks great on camera. But you know what, guys? After using it for a few months, it kind of accumulates in that sponge. And it's hard to open. Like, my goodness like you like what is happening <laughs> i'm serious like holy cow i think it's just because product starts to accumulate 
you know what I mean? It just gets nasty and mine doesn't have the sponge anymore because I got sick of the fact that the sponge was not releasing a lot of product anymore. It just has that little bit more of emollients and slightly thickness to it. Once it kind of like sits into the sponge a bit, it kind of dries in there and eventually it's hard to even get product to come out. So I got so frustrated and I just ripped the sponge off and I'm, you know, pushing it through and you do get a little bit of product and it's not bad, but now it's just like extra thick. I don't know why. And it's just kind of really doesn't blend well anymore. And I've only had it for maybe, well, maybe a year. Okay. Cause I did set it aside just a little while ago, but from the moment I opened it to when I kind of started getting fed up with it, it was only a matter of like six months, but I feel like it should last a little bit longer than that. And I just think the contraption is the problem. It's not the product. That's a problem. It is not an ideally Oh my gosh, ideally, you know, designed product. So I think if she were to redesign it and just maybe do a typical doe foot applicator, yes, I would definitely repurchase it. It still is a good concealer. It covers a lot. It just has that nice emollients to it. The way it's designed, it gets dry fast and it's just a disaster to use. So that's that. And I'm sure a lot of you can agree with that one at least, hopefully. All right, now let's go into some sunshine and rainbows and butterflies and talk about my top five products from Charlotte Tilbury. I have recently discovered some of her skincare products and these two really stand out. What I've been using in the summertime and leading into kind of early fall has been her Magic Cream Light. I absolutely, positively love this product. I cannot wait for spring to come again when I can start using it. It would probably be enough for winter with all of my added moisture serums underneath, but I do like to reserve it, you know, come into the spring and then use something a little bit heavier just to kind of use it up from my collection for the winter where my skin can kind of just for sure handle it. So this cream here, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Light is actually not super light at all. It's not as thick as her original Magic Cream, which I also love, especially in the winter. So here we go. And then when you blend it out, like I said, it's not as thick as the Magic Cream Original, but you do have to kind of spread it around. You know what I mean? It's not going to just melt in the skin naturally. You do have to kind of push it into the skin, but it just leaves the most beautiful glow. I do prefer this over the original Magic Cream, but I do have quite a few of these small ones that were gift with purchases and so forth to use up. So I decided I'm going to set this aside for the winter save whatever's left in here for the spring before I repurchase and just use up the magic cream, which again is actually really quite lovely. It's just a little bit more of a thicker consistency. Both of them have the most faint, faint, slightly rosy scent. So this is definitely thicker. It's just a little bit more emollient. I still find the light kind of just like melts into the skin a little bit better. You kind of just get more of a glow with that, I feel. I feel like the Magic Cream, the original, it kind of sits a little bit more on top of the skin, whereas the light kind of just really, you know, absorbs into the skin. So they're both beautiful. Like I said, the most delicate, delicate rose scent, which is actually quite refreshing. She got it right with both of these creams. I think they're absolutely fantastic skincare products. Moving along to some makeup, I'm gonna go over a foundation. I just recently purchased the Beautiful Skin Foundation. It hasn't come in yet, so I can't wait to review her latest foundation. In the meantime, this is my favorite one. This is the Magic Foundation. I absolutely, positively love this foundation. Last year, it was constantly between this one and the Guerlain L'Essentiel foundation that I was using for filming. It looks so beautiful on the skin. It covers absolutely everything you need covered, but yet it still looks very, very fresh, you know what I mean? It doesn't have like a super crazy heaviness to it, but it is a good solid medium to kind of like, I wouldn't say medium to heavy, I would say it's a solid, you know, solid medium. Makeup sits so well on top of it. She has so many beautiful shades and undertones. I happen to be in the shade four in this particular foundation and it's just perfect. Like it's a neutral, but it just has, enough warmth in it to look very natural. I absolutely love this foundation. And I just feel like it's the most perfect satin finish foundation. One of those foundations where you can't go wrong, especially if you're going out to an event, if you are gonna be putting a little bit more makeup over top, makeup sits on it just 
so, so beautifully. Absolute winner from Charlotte Tilbury. And then moving along to what you can do to set your foundation, and that's going to be the airbrush powder. This one's pretty much done. I do have a backup. I'm just trying to use up some other powders in my collection right now because I know if I open up my backup, I'm not gonna wanna use any other powder. It's emollient and yet it sets down your makeup. It's truly magical. For being as, like I said, I'm not gonna say it's a moisturizing powder, but I'm gonna say it's it's a definitely non-drying powder. There is a slight emollience to it. It's very sheer, it's very smooth. It just sets everything down without making anything on your face look chalky. Makeup goes really well over on top of it. It is absolutely stunning. And for being that slightly bit emollient, it doesn't feel heavy on the skin and probably Oh, I'm gonna say it's my favorite setting powder of all time. And I've tried quite a bit because having a combination skin type, I do need to set down my T-zone, but I don't want anything too drying for my cheeks. It's a winner and I'm sure she sells one every second as well. <laughs> Let's do a couple of lip products, shall we? Yeah, if you don't like lip liner, get this lip liner because you will love it. The other shades don't necessarily always perform exactly like the shade Pillow Talk. I feel like this one's special. It just has like that beautiful neutrality to it. The waxiness is just enough to really adhere to your lips, but it's not overly pigmented either. It's just perfection in the Pillow Talk shade. I also have it in Super Size Me, which is a little bit darker and I do like it as well. Super Size Me is the darker one there and then Pillow Talk is right there. And I just feel like Pillow Talk has a slight less opaqueness to it. It's slightly sheer, like I said, slightly waxy. And so it just kind of adheres to your lip line, makes your lips look a little bit more plump, and it's just something special. So if I was gonna recommend one, it would definitely be in the shade Pillow Talk, hands down. And then I'm just gonna include quickly just a little lipstick before I get to my fifth official product. And this is a little bit underrated for her. I forget what these are called. I was supposed to check before filming. The one I currently have is in Pillow Talk. And oh, what are these called? I'll just put the name of them right there. These are the most beautiful, slightly sheer, emollient, glossy lipsticks. I absolutely love this formula from Charlotte Tilbury and it probably has to be my favorite formula. I do like the kissing lipstick, but I feel like this one is special. Again, there's something unique about it. And you have to remember, I do like a slightly tacky, occlusive, cushioning lipstick. And this is in the shade Pillow Talk, which again has that mauve but there's a freshness to it. And again, I don't know if it's because it's a little bit more glossy. And so it doesn't look as matronly on me. And it's slightly sheer, so my natural lip color can peek through. It's very moisturizing. It stays on the lips because it has that slight, almost like pseudo glossy tackiness to it. It's really special. And I wanna get some more shades from this particular line. And I probably will at some point once I stop buying kind of like new releases and maybe during a sale. I'll just try and get a couple more shades because it is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipstick formula for sure. And last but not least, you guys, I'm getting out of breath, but we're moving along, we're moving along, and we're gonna talk eyeshadow. While these particular palettes are limited edition, I do believe the smoky version is still available on her website. This was the palette for holiday. Anytime she comes out with these large palettes, the instant eye palettes, she comes out with one it seems like every kind of holiday Christmas season and the formula in these is definitely special. It's different than her quads. There's a creaminess, there's a sparkly, sheeny, shiny blinginess to these that is absolutely unsurpassed. While some of these shades are truly, truly metallic, not really glittery, but just very sheeny, they don't enhance texture on the eyelids. And I do find that some smooth, shiny metallic shades, they can almost like sink in. And I don't know if it's because they have more minerals in the formula and they kind of like, you know, sink in, enhance the crepiness or dryness, but these ones don't. So anybody with more mature lids, me, I have a slight hooded lid. I feel like these just go on so smoothly and they blend beautifully. They're pigmented. These really, really stand out in her collection. I know she has 
um, an Insta Eye Palette in the shade Pillow Talk. Again, that one's really good. And there's something special about the formula in these. I don't know if you guys agree with me, let me know. They do stand out when it comes to her eyeshadow formula versus the quads and four shades versus 12 shades. The price point is definitely better for those particular products. I do have reviews of these ones, so I will link them down below. Guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you found it very helpful and not too controversial, but let me know your thoughts down below. If you disagree with me, just let me know. I think it's really fun to talk about makeup and it's really fun to exchange ideas and tips and tricks and opinions. I'm gonna leave you guys with a, a video next. It's going to be a very, very informative video, especially for my Canadian friends here on YouTube. It's going to be how I get makeup at like 30% off, how I get free makeup at Shoppers Drug Mart for redemption of their point system. It's a truly unbelievable reward system. I'm gonna leave that video next of how I get free luxury makeup from Chanel, Dior, and so forth just from shopping at Shoppers Drug Mart Beauty Boutique. Watch that video next if you're interested in saving some money on luxury beauty. I wish you guys all the best. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, you guys.